Hey there everyone, yes I'm blind, what about it? So as some of you know I have a website, it's at httpsnotabee.ee and basically the only reason it exists is that once every half a year I post a guide or a tutorial or a text version of a video that I made so that you guys can follow the tutorial conveniently and you know without having to pause the video and fast forward and etc. So it's nothing extraordinary, it's very simple, very basic, but if you want to make a website like this yourself, sooner or later you will stumble upon a thing called Static Website Generator. It's a type of software that essentially does one thing, among many things they do, is that you write your blog posts or your articles in Markdown or other markup language, and then they apply a theme to it and make a cool, cute website from it. And the static site generator that I'm personally using is called Hexo. And yeah, you know, it, it's fine. Like, it's not too complicated, it's, you know, nothing special. But the problem with Hexo and with a lot of modern website generators such as Jekyll, Hugo, etc. is that they're bloat. None of them are free of sin. Most of mainstream static website generators are absolutely bloated. They're overcomplicated behemoths, they're overengineered, super complicated and have a lot of dependencies and essentially they will probably be okay if you're running a huge, I don't know, news website or a personal blog with thousands of categories, comments, users, etc. But for a small website like mine, it's too excessive. At the same time, you know, you might want to ask, well, why don't you just write articles on Markdown and, you know, use some kind of a CSS and a converter to convert them to HTML and just upload them to your server like that. Well, the problem with this is writing in plain HTML is not an option, it's just too much of a pain in the ass. And if I want to write my blog posts in Markdown, I essentially give up a lot of functionality that comes with those static website generators, such as common header, common footer, you know, all the stuff that, you know, if you do it for every page manually, it will be just such a pain in the ass. And besides, if I want to present users with some kind of a you know, main page that presents a list of all the articles that I have, I will have to do it manually as well, which is not something that I will want to do. So I started looking for something in between. Something between writing pure HTML and uploading it to your server like a fucking caveman and using an overcomplicated, bloated website generator. And I found this. This, my friends, is SSG, which is essentially a static website generator written in POSIX shell. Yes, not even bash. POSIX shell. By default, it has 180 lines of code and it was written by a comrade, Roman Slotarev. And yeah, basically what it does is it takes your header and your footer. These, by the way, are the only pieces of the page that have to be written in HTML. It puts your blog post somewhere in between and it generates, well, you know, a cute little website. So let me just show you how it works and demonstrate the new the very new website that I made using this tool, which is anti-bloat, super minimalist, and so on. So this is the directory with my website, and it consists of two folders, DST and SRC, which stand for destination and source, respectively. Here we have uh, markdown files, which are my uh, blog posts, and then we have footer and header, which basically are going to be appended to every blog post. And we also have images and miscellaneous files, CSS as well. By the way, this is CSS I stole from someone on GitHub and you know, kind of tinker with it until it looked decent. So essentially what you want to do is you want to type SSG5 source folder, destination folder, the website's name, in my case it's Wolfgang's blog, and then your website's base URL. And there you go. So as you can see, SSG generated our website. So let's see what it looks like. And there you go. This is very minimalist, very simple, very clean looking. And I can also open a random article for you. There you go. Yeah, in my opinion, it looks much better and much cleaner than my older website. So for example, let me just show you the latest article. This is what it looks like on the new version of website. And this is the old one. It's like, ah, you know, it's just, uh, so generic, so uncool, am I right? <laughs> so yeah, essentially um, SSG5 doesn't have any dependencies if you just want to write your websites in pure HTML, but if you want to convert them from Markdown, you'll have to install either Lowdown or Markdown.pl. I personally prefer Lowdown because it wraps all the code blocks into the pre-tag. Let me show you what it looks like. Yeah, here we go, this is the pre-tag. And essentially it lets me style uh, new line code blocks and inline code uh, snippets differently. And this is the kind of approach I like more. Maybe for you, if you don't include any code in your articles, 
maybe markdown.pl will be more than enough. So this is the website of Lowdown and it's written in C, has no dependencies and the way you install it, basically you clone the GitHub repository. You go into it and then you type dot slash configure. It's very easy, it basically works you know, the same way for any program which you download as a source code first and then compile it. So then you just uh, type make and at the end you type sudo make install. And there you go. So that's very simple and there's not much to say here. One more thing that I wanted to mention is that there is one uh, function that the SSG doesn't include and that is generating a list of existing articles on the website on the main page. So this is something I added myself. Let me show you what it looks like. So this function, render article list, basically what it does is it lists all the articles that the website has and it generates a list and puts it on the main page. It is extremely cursed and, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not very well versed in shell scripting, but it works. So I don't care if it's kind of janky or if it's, you know, poorly written. It works for me and, you know, I'm happy for that. So the last thing that I want to show you for today is basically the way I generate and deploy my website. So I created a couple of fish aliases for that. So the first one is generate. What it does essentially is it clears the cache. I feel like that's just a cleaner way to generate websites to start, you know, start fresh. And then it generates the website using my blog name and my URL. And then basically for the deploy script, what it does is it launches rsync and it makes sure that the files that are transferred to my web server are owned by the user www-data. So there's like no weird permission problems. And yeah, let me just demonstrate you how it works. So I go to the directory of my website. Let me just make sure that we're here. And then I type generate, I will ampersand, deploy. So at the end, when it finished generating my website, I type my SSH password and there we go. That's done. So yeah, if you see this video, chances are this version of website is already deployed and that's what you should see when you go to notthebee.ee. So yeah, I'm very happy with the way it turned out and big thanks to Roman Zolterov for making such a great piece of software. And yeah, that's it for this video. So thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry if my forehead was sweaty because it's, it's just extremely hot here. And at the end of this video, as usual, I would like to thank my patrons. Ray Piria, Remus Ilyish, Mitchell Valentino, and everyone else supports this channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.